All right, everybody, this video we want to talk about step functions. I'm just going to give you some basics. Hopefully this will be a fairly quick video. Here, right here, is a step function. In this class, we're going to call it u of t. And what it means is this right here. The function is 0 for all t values that are less than 0. And the function is 1 for all t values that are greater than or equal to 0. So hopefully, obviously, this right here is the t-axis. I do want to point out that other notations exist for this step function. A lot of times we call this the Heaviside step function. So um, in some textbooks, this will be denoted with an h instead of a u. But in this class, we're going to use a u every single time to denote a step function. This often seems fairly trivial to students, but um, I, I always like to ask the question, what is u of phi? Well, a step function can only have two values, 0 and 1. Because our t value is positive, it's greater than or equal to 0, our step function has a value of 1. Again, since t is a positive number here, our step function is 1. And whenever the argument inside of your step function is a negative number, the value of the step function is just going to be zero. So we're going to have a lot of u's on our boards in future classes. And I think it's important to point out that every one of those u's that I read on the board means the exact same thing. It always means that if the argument of the function is positive, the value of the function is 1. And if the argument of the function is negative, the value of the function is 0. So the next step in investigating these step functions is asking the question, what happens if you replace a t with a t minus 5? Well, what happens with any function when you replace a t with a t minus 5? You actually take the entire function and you shift it to the right by 5 units. So our step function is shifted to the right by 5 units. And if you write it as a piecewise function, it looks something just like this. Now again, I feel like I need to point out that this u is the same as this u, and it's the same as all of these u's that are in this video. And I think we do need to look at it from this perspective as well. If we plugged in uh, a t value, let's say t equals 4. We plug in t equals 4, that occurs right here on our graph, t equals 4. If we plug in t equals 4, we get u of 4 minus 5, which is u of negative 1. And since there's a negative number in the argument of our step function, the value of that step function is 0. That's why right here at t equals 4, the value of the step function is 0. But as soon as your t values become equal to or bigger than 5, the argument of your step function becomes positive, and the output of the step function becomes 1. This may seem like a little bit of overkill right now, and I actually kind of hope it is, because um, these tend to get a little bit confusing. Let's look at another example here. The next question is, what happens to a step function if you shift it to the right by 4 units and multiply it by 3? Well, again, anytime you multiply an entire function by a constant, you're going to have this vertical stretch or squish of the function. So again, this u is the same as every other u up here. And as long as our t value is less than 4, the step function itself is going to be valued at 0. That 0 is multiplied by 3, of course, to get 0. But any time your t value is greater than or equal to 4, this step function becomes 1. And this 1 is multiplied by 3. And the function looks like that. So personally, I actually like to think of these step functions as, as on and off switches. Because the value of a step function can only either be 1 or 0, I think of this step function as off or 0 when t is less than 4. And I think of the function as on or 1 when t is greater than 4. So when I look at this, I think to myself, OK, the function here is 3. But that function is off because of this argument here. Whenever t is less than 4, it's off at 0. But as soon as t becomes greater than or equal to 4, this function turns on and becomes 3 for all t values greater than 4. Let's look at another example. OK, now we're summing up two different step functions. Let's see what happens. I look at this and think that as long as t is less than 1, that all of the arguments, or I guess both of the arguments, inside of these two step functions are both going to be negative. So both functions are going to be 0, as long as t is less than 1. If t is a value between 1 and 4, then the argument of this step function is going to become positive, while the argument of this step function is still negative. Therefore, what you'd end up having is 2 times 1 plus 0. So for all values between t equals 1 and t equals 4, we have a function that is just 2. As soon as our t value becomes bigger than 4, the argument inside of each of our two step functions becomes a positive number. Therefore, both of these step functions become 1. And we're left with 2 times 1 plus 1, which gives us 3. So when t is bigger than 4, our function value is 3. Let me say that with slightly different language. Uh, when t is less than 1, both of these step functions are off. They're both 0. 
so our function value is 0. When t is between 1 and 4, this step function turns on, but this step function is still off. We have 2 times 1 plus 0. That gives us this 2 function. When t is bigger than 4, both of these step functions turn on, and we have 2 times 1 plus 1, which gives us our 3 here. If we write out our piecewise function, it looks something like this. We have a function that starts at 0, that function jumps up to 2 when t equals 1, and then it jumps again up to 3 when t equals 4. So you'll start to see a pattern. Every time we have a step function, this is going to represent a jump or a change in the function at the t value given right here. Notice this step function represents a jump or a change in the function at t equals 1, and this step function represents a jump or a change in the function at t equals 4. How big of a jump in each case is given by the function in front of the step function. In this case we just have constants in front of the step function. So at time equals 1 we get a jump of 2 right here. And at time equals 4, we get a jump of this coefficient, which is just 1, right here. So hit pause on your browser for a second and consider what would you do if you wanted to take this piecewise function that I'm pointing at right here, and you wanted to rewrite it in terms of a sum of step functions, this right here. Well, I hope you hit pause on your browser and pondered, because that's what I want you to do for your video quiz number 12. I drew out a piecewise function for you. And I'd like you to think about it and try to write this as a sum of two step functions. And even though my drawing is impeccable, it's totally perfect, uh, I did write in that this function has a value right here of 4, and this piece of the function here has a value of 6, and obviously down here the value is 0. And yeah, I guess I may as well draw in the numbers down here on the t-axis as well for you. Alright, good luck with that, and I'll see you in class.